I'm a Mobe, an ordained priest in Zoroastrian faith. And I welcome you to the Zoroastrian Center where most of our communal and individual prayers are held over a period of time. The University of Toronto hired me two years ago in 2007 to teach courses on the history of Zoroastrianism, both at the undergraduate and graduate level. Uh, these, uh, the introduction of these courses was meant for the students to have a more complete overview over the religious history of uh, the world. Well, the Russian religion started somewhere in the Central Asia, you know, in the North Central Asia, where uh, like uh, present-day Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Bactria, those are the areas. There's a, there's a little sea called Aral Sea, you know, and it is uh, in that area which was known as Sogdiana, was the culture that it was known as. And it was somewhere in that area that the Zoroastrian faith began. What uh, my students get after uh, the course, uh, during the course and after it, is uh, some, first of all, basic information on the history of Zoroastrianism, a religion that previously they, before starting the course, most of them, they don't even know the existence of it. Um, also, it allows them to go beyond their own background. Very few students of mine are Zoroastrians. Most of them have other religious backgrounds. And, uh, well, studying about this religion, uh, they get to have uh, a glimpse over another cultural religion, which is very ancient, which has been very influential in the world uh, cultural and religious history and uh, which has given um, original answers to some uh, questions that uh, all or at least most of the religions uh, try to answer to. Prophet Zoroaster and actually the name, the Iranian name is Zarathustra. Zoroaster is a Greek connotation of the prophet's name after the Hellenistic takeover. Nevertheless, he actually elaborated the philosophy of how to live a life in a righteous manner. And based on that, he uh, uh, proclaimed that the thinking, the speaking, and the doing are the most important thing, and to do them the good way, the right way, and the righteous way. That was basically sums up the actual teachings of the prophet. Now, he has elaborated all that in his hymns, the hymns we know as Gathas. These was his word. These are the only scripture that are the words of the prophet that we have. And they were orally transmitted for about 2,000 years before they were written down. They were written down in about 3rd century common era in the Sasanian time, whereas these were composed way back around 15 to 1700 BC. <laughs> as far as the practice of the faith is concerned, as you mentioned, it is re very reflective in nature, and therefore individuals uh, say they give, uh, uh, offer their own devotions and in the places of worship. One can do that even in their own houses, for example, having a sacred corner and saying their prayers. Now, prayers uh, are considered to have to be to be said about five times a day, you know. And there are days divided into five sections, and so each one offers uh, their own devotion to the uh, prophet uh, as they wish. Now, there is also congregational prayers, and those are performed in the centers, it, there are some that can be performed anywhere. And they are the outer liturgical ceremonies. There are inner liturgical ceremonies that has to be performed in the, place, in the consecrated places of worship. But we don't have any consecrated places of worship in North America. There, but in India, there are temples where they can be performed. So I first got to know about the existence of Zoroastrianism when I was in the high school. Uh, I was studying the Greek-Persian Wars of the 5th century BC. 
and in my textbook there was a short paragraph describing Zoroastrianism. Well, I was quite intrigued by the few information that I uh, was reading in my textbook, but well, I had no chance to get more information for that at that time. Then when I got to the university, I was very lucky because the very year that I started my undergraduate studies, a course was introduced in my university, the University of Rome, about uh, the religions of pre-Islamic Iran. What I found and I still find interesting in, this, in, this, in the study of this religion is that there are so many aspects uh, that are, um, still have to be investigated this religion has exerted a strong uh, um, influence on other religious cultures of the Near East and also well, of the Asian world and also of the Western world. The important aspect about flame or fire that we have in our sanctum sanctorum is the light. Light is knowledge. Light is enlightenment. It is the element of fire that Zarathustra elevated to the highest possible level of ritualistic purity that it became the embodiment of the very god of Zarathustra, Ahura Mazda. I think that one of the most important uh, contributions that Zoroastrianism has given to the world culture, well, beside the points of, uh, well, the various um, notions that, that uh, it uh, produced first and that were later accepted in other religious traditions. So the, the, the principal contribution was the idea of a choice, a responsibility for the individual to choose for his behavior. So the individual is considered as responsible for the choice of behaving well or badly. This is an idea that is already found in the first Zoroastrian texts, well, more than around 3,000 years ago. The religion of Zarathustra respects and holds sacred all the creation and the righteous way of life that he proclaimed to humanity is as relevant today in the 21st century as it was in 1700 BC when he proclaimed it.